Hello everybody, FF Charlatan here, back again with some Art of Rally gameplay. It's been a while, hasn't it, since the last stream, so apologies for that. For any of you that have been waiting, I can't imagine there's many of you, but you never know. Uh, so, if you've been watching the Art of Rally streams, you will no doubt be aware that I finally made it to the uh, made it through the career mode and I am now in the process of grinding through all the uh, well that sounds a bit negative earning my way through all the trophies uh, in the game and I've actually got them all apart from one uh, which is for finishing or completing a thousand stages now somewhere I read that you only need to complete obviously you need to complete a thousand stages but you only need to complete the career mode I think twice and that should get you to a thousand stages that's absolutely wrong I did a little bit of maths and you would need to complete it I think I think even if you went through the entire career mode I think four times you still would not have the thousand stages it works out just under if my maths is right I could be slightly off um, I was trying to do it hastily so long story short I've essentially just got to keep playing the game I know there is a glitch uh, or well yeah I suppose it is a glitch an exploit to earn it um, illegitimately but I didn't really want to do that just because it feels a bit well it just doesn't feel right and I do, I do actually enjoy the game and I just think you know that thousand stages gives me a goal to kind of keep or an incentive to keep playing for longer so that's what I'm going to try and do um, so I'm just going to tweet out a link to this uh, before we get started what I've been doing I was doing it off stream um, and basically going back through the career mode and just go any event I hadn't won I was just replaying until I won it so it'll become clear I think later on in the video when I go to the career mode that you'll, you'll see that basically I'm just when you look at it it should have first place in every single season that's the goal so I just thought that will um, again just add like a fun dimension to go and going back and replaying through the game uh, trying out some different cars maybe uh, revisiting some cars that I really liked um, and yeah, so I'll probably kick things off with a quick run of the daily event today, which I'm not sure what it is yet. Um, just to kind of get warmed up, get into the flow, and then yeah, we'll just get into the go back through the career mode and try and win every single season. Um, if you guys have any requests for seasons, vehicles, liveries, anything like that, just pop them in the chat, and we'll go with that. So I'm just getting the link tweeted now, guys, and then we'll get into it. Sorry, I've been chatting for a few minutes, so. Well, as I say, welcome back if you've watched any of the previous videos. Welcome if you haven't. This is your first one. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, it should be fun, guys. It's been a few minutes, so I'll hit begin here. And we'll get into it. So it's Japan. Mount Haruna. I probably mispronounced that. Uh, 4.1 miles, so medium length, medium to long. Group S. So these are like the prototype. What would have succeeded Group B, but basically was abandoned just because they were too dangerous, basically. Uh, let's see what we're in. I think that's the Audi, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get straight into it. I have changed the camera view. I think to one which is like basically a lot lower down so I don't think I've done that in my previous streams and I just find that this camera angle is it this one um, you can see a lot more of the road ahead of you it's less sort of bird's eye and more of a chase cam and I just find you can you can just see much, so much more of the road ahead of you now sorry I'm trying to chat well concentrating on the road. I don't normally do this. I normally mute my mic for the stages just so I can concentrate fully. 
Um, but I basically forgot to do that. That's how rusty I am. It's been a few, it's been a, I'm not actually quite sure how, how long it's been between the streams. It's been a while as I uh, just completely fluff up the hairpin. Not once but twice. Um, I don't remember what Group S car I used actually when I did the career mode. I'm trying to think right now. Was it Lancia, I think? So I don't even think I've driven this car yet. I could be wrong again. Go back and watch <laughs> go back and watch the career mode stream if you are curious. But these daily events are really good. You basically, if you're not familiar, you just get one shot. You don't know what car it's going to be. You don't know what stage is going to be until obviously it starts loading. So you can't... I suppose you could probably look it up. But the idea is you're not practicing. You're just going in somewhat blind. You get given the car. You get given the stage right as it begins and you get one shot if you if you retire you retire you're not able to retry you're not able to restart or do anything like that submit more than one run and then obviously you look at the leaderboards in the day to see where you fare similar to the daily events on uh, on dirt rally uh or dirt rally 2 i'm not sure if the first one had it i'm sure it did and i've been really rusty uh but it's just a good good way i suppose for me to get back into the game I've had a really busy few weeks with work and other stuff going on, so I haven't really played all that much out of Rally, and obviously as a result I haven't been streaming much. Uh, but I'm quite keen, now things have settled down a little bit, to get back into the regular streams, so you'll see me Mondays and Tuesdays at 7pm, GMT. And that's the plan moving forward. So as you can probably tell, I'm really gentle on the throttle here and I'm not really focusing too much I'm just kind of rambling rambling on so I don't expect this to be a very competitive time but you never know sometimes you do a daily event and not that many people have entered it so you naturally you score quite decently also I find that in the sort of higher classes so you know your group B's group S group A etc um, I don't know if it's just people struggle to drive them, obviously they are harder to drive than the, um, the older classes. Um, and so maybe not many people completing the stage or having more accidents and naturally not having competitive times, I don't know. I could just be overthinking it, but um, yeah, this car is actually really nice to drive. I was really paranoid about Group S, thinking they'd be really tough to drive. I mean, obviously they are... Um, I'm just saying that they're not that hard to drive in what's happened. But they are, you know, sort of refined Group B cars, so they're still very, very powerful. But I think this is just kind of bridging the gap between Group B and Group A. Uh, 3 minutes 31 a oh, that's very good. But we can have a quick look at the leaderboards just to see where we fare. Um, 83rd. So you can see there that. Obviously, there's not much difference between my guy, the, me and the guys around me. Uh, just like a couple of tenths, three or four tenths, just separating the guys sort of just above and just below me. So if I cut out the mistakes, let's say, I don't know, three, three minute twenty. Let's just scroll up the leaderboard. No, oh, it won't let us. Oh, okay. Uh, but I was just curious to see, you know, how far off the pace we were. I think we can change the pace. So the top times, 2 minutes 45, so obviously we're way, way off that, that's a really quick time, 6 seconds faster than the second best, um, quite nice to see they've got the uh, Ukrainian flags as well, given current events, uh, but we won't get into that, but yeah, it's just interesting, just to sort of see where you fare compared to other people around the world, so in context of our goal of getting a thousand stages done, that's 0.1%. We're <laughs> 0.1% uh, well, closer than we were at the start of this video. So, as I sort of mentioned, I'm just going back through. I think I was I on group three or group four? Group three. Yeah, so you can see that you've just got first place on all of those. So, not necessarily winning every single stage, but at least winning or finishing first in each season. So it gets a little bit easier with the later ones because you've got more rallies, more stages. So if you have a bad one, it doesn't affect you too much. I did Group 3 as well. 
Oh, it's a second group three, sorry, it wasn't I? So yeah, so here we go, so group four, so I finished first in a couple. Some I actually finished in first naturally while I was playing through the career mode, uh, so I won't replay those at this stage, but here we've got one where 1979, the best I did was second, one rally five stages, so we'll go with that. Warning, this will erase your progress, so yeah, essentially it just wipes it, so it looks like you haven't actually done that season. Um, I'm sticking the AI on skilled. I did, after I finished career mode, push it up to master, uh, which is the hardest. And I did, I got, obviously I got the trophy for winning a rally on master difficulty with severe damage. Um, generally, it took it took a while before I got that trophy. It was very, very hard for me um, to get the, the, t the consistent stage times, or consistently competitive stage times to actually win a rally and I think I got lucky with the AI retiring so um, I'm going to put it back down to skilled for now I just find that generally I'm more competitive as well, as I should be um, finishing sort of in the top three perhaps once I've finished going through everything on skilled I might crank it back up if it gets too um, easy but yeah just going through the group four cars there's quite a lot to choose from actually I think this must be one of the more populated classes in the game. You can just see from the mileage um, of the cars, a lot of I haven't actually tried. The original I just used to just to get that trophy for driving the original at Japan. Um, but the car I really like in this class, I've got 59 miles on the cars, I did use that a lot, uh, was this one, the Turbo Brick, 138 miles. I love this car. It just feels really, really smooth. Um, I started using it at the end of the Group 4, um, the latter stages on the career mode, if I remember rightly, on the original run. Uh, I just think the car looks cool. I don't know. What, I mean, it, obviously, it looks cool because it looks kind of really bland. It's like a typical 1970s car, isn't it? Uh, but I really like this this colour scheme. And, yeah, it's just something about it. It just screams out to me. It just looks kind of boxy. It doesn't really look like it would be that quick. Uh, so I'll start off with that, I'll start off with this, we're going to be in Norway and as I say guys if you have any requests or there's a specific vehicle you want to see or livery or whatever please do pop it in the chat and uh, as I say this isn't going to be as intense as the career mode the main goal of this video is just to, or this this challenge I suppose is just to get through as many stages as I can I've got no idea, as far as I can tell there's no way of tracking how many stages you've done, so I've essentially just got to keep playing until I hit that milestone, which is fine by me, because I love this game. So we are going to get into Rally Norway, I am going to mute this mic this time just so I can concentrate and hopefully put on a better show for you, so I will see you at the finish line guys, enjoy.
Okay, so some of you would have noticed I lost a little bit of time towards the end there as I was flicking through the cameras. It was just to ensure that I was I had that um, sort of the lowest one down. As I sort of said at the start of the video, it's more of a chase cam. It's kind of behind the car looking ahead as opposed to um, the sort of more standard camera settings which sort of have a almost like a bird's eye view. I wish I'd discovered this earlier because I'm convinced it's made me so much quicker um, at being able to sort of see more of the road ahead and be able to kind of prepare for it before you get to the, t the corners as opposed to reacting to it a bit too late when you get there. Um, particularly as you don't have a co-driver in this game, uh, I just found it a little bit tricky at times to kind of know what was coming up. Obviously you can go through and learn the stages but I feel like I'm starting to recognise certain parts of stages but I definitely don't have time to just keep practising the same stage over and over and over again just to learn the route. And I also don't really think that's true rallying is it? it, it part of it is obviously listening to your co-driver and anyway I'm kind of getting waffling on. You can see the point I'm trying to make. Um, for me personally I think the game is, is so much better with that that camera setting and I know you can tweak the angles and that a lot more I haven't really gone into that too much it's just the standard um, I think it's option one uh, I can have a look at it now quickly for anyone who's interested most of you probably aren't and in fact probably none of you are but that's fine camera view one is uh, is the one I go for I just as I say I definitely think it's improved my time so that would be a top tip from me for anybody curious anyway stage two guys enjoy stage was absolutely rubbish with quite a few mistakes and you know what I, I was just thinking to myself I'd won the first stage and I thought oh, maybe maybe it's time I did crank up the difficulty and uh, I'm glad I didn't because that was poor but um, that said obviously if it does get to the point where I'm just winning every stage and it's not really a challenge then I obviously I will crank it up just to make it a bit more interesting and also I don't necessarily want to win every stage and then just blast through this challenge of finishing first in every single season because um, it's just the, the whole point of it is that it's going to take me close to or if not to a thousand stages so yeah as I say if if it is getting a bit too easy guys don't worry we will crank that up and uh, 
add to add to the drama, add to the excitement. But anyway, we're going to get straight into stage three. Enjoy. That stage was going quite well until uh, we uh, ran into that tree there. So bizarrely, I finished third in the stage, but I'm uh, in the rally. So the closest competitors really fell off there. Not too sure what happened, but good news for me. A sub two minute run there, and now we're going to stage four. I don't know the extent of the damage at this stage but the engine was smoking so it can't be good and we've got one more stage before we can get the car repaired so nothing's really changed I'm still making silly mistakes that I was making throughout the career mode um, I do feel like the pressure's off now because I'm just going through and essentially grinding through the stages um, and you know, if I don't, if I don't finish first, it's fine. We just try again, you know. And I'm actually really enjoying like this Volvo. I really, really like. It's really strange. Um, I just find it so easy to drive, especially the Group A cars. I actually thought would be arguably the most drivable in the game but they're actually a lot trickier than you think at least that's the way I found it and you could probably notice I forgot to meet my mic before I uh, hit begin stage so it's another one where I'm chatting along so you'll have to forgive little moments of silence if I really start trying to concentrate and you'll also have to excuse any mistakes I do make I'm just getting my excuses in there, guys. Ooh. Hard on the brakes there. That actually used to happen to me a lot in the Group A cars. You sort of get on two wheels and then next thing you know, you're rolling. Um, I don't really know why. I guess it's just the physics of the game and the speed of the cars. I'm not really too sure. I don't remember that being a, a potent feature of Group A cars that they just rolled all the time. I mean, I've seen plenty of rally cars rolling, but I don't know that it was just uniquely to Group A. I don't know why I'm still talking about it, to be honest, but here we are. So, I suppose one of the issues, and I'm sure there's a way of kind of fiddling about the camera settings, um, 
but I suppose one of the biggest issues with the camera in this game is how, like you just saw in that foresty sequence, whoops, uh, that you can essentially, they're like blind spots almost, don't really know what else to call them, where you, you can't see the car or they obstruct your, your view of the car or the road. Normally, you, you know, you kind of blitz through them quite quickly, but it, it really, it could make or break your stage time. And you could definitely have a big accident if, uh, if you're unlucky. Um, ideally, I mean, I understand why we should stage win, please with that. Um, only just though, uh, the Uruguayan, I think that's a Uruguayan flag was right on our tail, but, um, yeah, I was talking about the, um, the camera settings. In most games now, I try and play with a cockpit view. Uh, again, it just adds to the authenticity. On games like Gran Turismo, I normally play with a, on the bonnet cam. I think it's called. Cool. I don't know. Anyway, my point is, they're generally the views I will go for. Um, I don't normally play games in chase cam anymore. You don't have that choice with this one. And I, I think it, it can can be really frustrating when you are trying to get a really fast stage or really concentrate and then your views are obstructed by a tree which the car's already passed you know or obviously wouldn't be obstructing your view if you were to be driving in real life but it's a minor gripe with a great game obviously this is not a sim uh it's not designed to be it is it, it is actually surprisingly realistic in a lot of areas i think particularly when you get airborne on the jumps and stuff if you're not careful when the car lands, you can really lose control, as you would in real life. Um, the game actually does that really well. You do feel the different surfaces, obviously the different weather conditions as well really affect the game. Again, not as much as a, as a true sim would, something like Dirt Rally, um, or you know, the WRC games, etc. But it does it well enough where you definitely have to think about it. I mean, here I'm just going to hit that flat out. Um, I knew, I could see that there was you know, no corner immediately after the jump, but if you go on like Finland where you've got some really tight technical stages with quite big jumps thrown in, it, it can be really tricky to master for you, um, as, as it would be in real life. So, uh, for anybody wondering, you definitely can't dismiss Art of Rally as just like an arcade racer with no real depth, it definitely has that depth. But going back to my original point, it is... Oh, what am I doing? Just missed the stage. I thought the, I thought the turn was before the helicopters. So that's me not focusing. Um, but yeah, as I said about the camera angles, it is annoying. When you, you know, your view's obstructed, or in, um, I think, like Sardinia and the and the little bits where you're going through the villages and uh, there's buildings either side. It does do this sort of effect where it kind of, it, it makes part of the, uh, it makes the car visible through objects, but it's not always consistent. It doesn't do it on everything. And it, you can sort of lose sight of where you are. But I think I've made that quite clear. I'm just kind of digressing now. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I was a little bit nervous as well actually at talking whilst on the stages because uh, sometimes I can, uh, the language I use when I make a mistake isn't always family friendly. So uh, I'm definitely <laughs> really having to try hard when I make a mistake and just be like, oh, oh dear. When really there'd be a few F sharps and uh, who knows what else thrown in. So I'm trying to keep it civilised. But I'll apologise in advance of any uh, any choice phrases you might hear. But again, I think I'm just generally a bit more relaxed now. I'm not only worried about the result. I'm just trying to enjoy as much of the thousand stages as I can and try and not to make it feel like a chore. I think if I was really hyper focused and really stressing about each stage, it would get um, a bit tedious. So we've done what we set out to do. We've won that rally. Um, I suppose I could have looked at the leaderboards, but it'll show us in the menu anyway, won't it? So that's a, a colossal victory over 100 seconds, a minute and 41 seconds. 
so it doesn't really get much better than that. Uh, three stage wins, which equates to 60%, and uh, that's 1979, sort of officially done. I mean, as I say, I could be really, really sort of anal and go back and try and win every single stage, because that yellow bar underneath the bottom there, so you can see in the previous one I did, I won all four stages. First one, I think I've got half of them, looks there about, that one 60%. I suppose I could go back and try and get first place and every single stage win. But, I don't know, maybe a challenge for the future. Uh, so we're going to go again, 1980 now. I'm going to crank it up to Master, because that was quite an easy victory, I'd say, in the previous one. Um, so we want to make it a little bit more, um, more of a challenge. But also, if I don't, if I don't complete it, I can go back and keep driving these cars. But I'm going to mix it up. I'm not going to go with the uh, the Volvo again. I'm going to try something that I haven't driven yet. So we've driven the Renault 5. I haven't used this BMW, which I think is the BMW M1. Is what it is in real life. Not actually called Das Uber Whip. I'm sure some of you will be surprised to learn. So I've tried the, I haven't tried the Super Montaigne. I haven't tried this one. <laughs> It's quite a weird looking car, isn't it? Uh, the Gazelle, I haven't tried that either, which I think is a Nissan. Could be wrong. Okay. I will go with Das Uber Whip. It looks quite cool, doesn't it? I like the livery. That one's quite cool as well. See, plain white, plain red, yellow, blue. I really don't like the camo liveries, personally. I think that one's first. Yeah, we'll go with that. Now, I'm expecting this to be much harder to drive than the Volvo. The Volvo just feels really, really smooth. I'm um, expecting this thing to be a bit of a handful. I'm not sure of the horsepower difference. It, there might not actually be much of a difference. I don't know. We shall see. Quite a tough stage first up six miles in Germany. Actually, let me know in the chat as well, guys, if you prefer me talking through the stages. It might just be really irritating. Maybe some of you just wanted to watch some pure stages and you've got my nasally voice rambling over the top. Some of you might like it. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments uh, or the chat, whatever it's called. Because um, I'm definitely, definitely want to make it a better experience for you viewers. So this thing sounds absolutely ferocious out of the box. But I just Okay. I think that's the only thing I like about the Volvo is that it just for me it's perfect. It's not understeering, it's not oversteering. This thing feels a little bit jittery, but as we said in the film, if I thought it would. into the tombstone. I don't know. I don't actually know what these are called. I don't I don't even really know what they're for. I don't know if it's like a just a deco decorative thing. I don't know if it's um, like some kind of I, I know it sounds a bit odd, but like a safety thing? You just stop cars flying off the road? I don't actually really know what the purpose of those stones are. So if you do know it'd be great to let us know in the chat. The car is pulling to the left now, which is a bit of a nuisance. Uh, so it's a bit of a handful there anyway. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, actually. Um, it looks great. It doesn't really look like a rally car, does it? Uh, but I think that's part of its charm. And uh, I'm not too much of a rally historian, but I know... I know that this thing was... Uh, essentially a supercar that they tried to get into rally. Porsche sort of tried it with the um, with their cars. I know I don't really know of any real success that supercars have had or GT cars have had in rally really. Um, I mean they're hard enough to handle on roads at times so on all these different surfaces, it doesn't really suit a supercar, does it? It's 
more of a track car. I think that's the great thing about Rally, is that, you know, you can really make a case for any sort of car, can't you? Um, anyway, I don't even know what I'm saying. I do feel like I'm just chatting for the sake. So, maybe I'll try and focus it a little bit. This is quite a difficult section of the hay bales everywhere. And I've tried to be a bit too cute there. Clip one on the exit of the chicane. The car's still pulling to the left. I, hope, I was hoping that might have straightened it out somewhat. Which would have been handy. This car definitely feels quicker than the Volvo. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it is, it might just feel that way because it's a bit more of a handful. And in that sense it might actually be a little bit slower because I'm really having to count the steering quite a lot and try and be smooth on my inputs, whereas the Volvo you can definitely be a bit more a bit rough on it. I don't know if that's the right word, a bit more aggressive maybe, you know, on the throttle, etc, and the steering. Or is this definitely a bit more cautious? So I'd be interested to see where we fare on the timings after the stage. As I say, we've cranked it up to master now, so this really is as, as good as the AI gets. And uh, I've seen on like Reddit and stuff, some people <laughs> don't think master's hard enough. Um, it's definitely, I find it personally a challenge, I mean obviously everyone's going to be different, everyone's going to have different ability. Um, where did we go? Oh, we've won the stage, so there you go. Obviously it's just a walk in the park, isn't it? Nine seconds as well, that's quite a, uh, quite a margin. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> what else can I say? I wasn't expecting that. Um, especially as I was just kind of rambling through the through the stage. But it's a good car. I like this. Um, it's fun to drive. I, I like Group 4 because it's kind of that... It, it doesn't have like the ridiculous horsepower of the um, of Group B. And, you know, the cars are just, I, I think, easier to drive just on that... You don't have to worry too much about the throttle inputs. You know, you can just almost overdrive them in a way, they're a bit more forgiving. I think once you get into the Group B and above, the cars are so powerful that you really have to think about your throttle inputs and um, well, steering input too, obviously, because you don't want to overdrive the car. Make silly mistakes. But this thing just feels really grippy, especially for a rear-wheel drive car as well. But again, I think obviously when you've spent so much time in the, the higher classes, so you know, group B, group S, group A, whatever, you're used to that extra power, so anything with less power in it, it just feels so much more manageable. It could could be that too. Um, it's obviously playing a part. But I'd say if I had to pick a favourite class in the game, before playing, I probably would have said group A just on the basis that that's what I grew up watching, so I've got more of a nostalgia for those sorts of cars but I really really like Group 4 as a, as a class and you've still got iconic cars in there like you've still got the Renault 5 um, which obviously featured heavily in Group B obviously you've got this which is just cool you've got uh, the Volvo which is great so there's a lot of charm in this class as well and it's just, it was a little bit more civilised than Group B, but, but like I say guys, any any requests for specific cars you want me to try, feel free to drop them in the chat, and I am more than happy to give them a go. Just doing a bit away with that. I really like the fog in this game. It feels really ominous. I love the art style in general, I think it looks looks great, but I don't like the fog on Norway, just because it's really hard to see the roads in some parts, because obviously it just, 
there's all the white snow anyway, and then when you throw fog on top of it, it just it feels like you can only see about 10 foot in front of the car. But it's a fun challenge. That felt great through there, I hope the spectators enjoyed that. As I was saying in the kind of pre, well it wasn't pre-stream, at the start of the stream, um, about the stages, I forget off the top of my head, it was a while ago that I worked it out, but I want to say there's, I want to say about 220 stages I think in the, um, in the career mode, assuming you were to go for everything you want. Now, second in that stage, okay. So that means if you times them by four, you're still sort of 80 odd stages off that thousand um, for the trophy. So it, it is a real grind in that sense. And I know there's like a glitch where you basically, you start the rally and then you have to, you have to intentionally just smash into a, a stone or something, write the car off and then restart it. And it still counts as you completing the stage. Um, I read about that online, but I just yeah, it just wouldn't feel right to do that, you know. It, I think yes, the thousand stages is going to take an absolute eternity to get, but I imagine it would feel amazing once you've finally done it, like a, you know, a genuine, a genuine accomplishment. Because it is a real marathon of a of a grind fest, a thousand stages when you think about it. But to kind of do it cheaply like that, you know, I. I've enjoyed this game so much, which has motivated me to try and get the platinum. And as I say, it just it, if anything, it adds longevity to the game. I can still see myself playing it after a thousand stages, because I think the daily challenges and the weekly challenges are a great idea. Um, and I just, you know what, it's such a, a chilled out game, like I, I'm really just enjoying now playing through and just kind of chatting away as I slam into one of the stones again. Um, I just think it's such a nice game visually. I love the car selection. It is a challenge, uh, but you, you know, if you, you can tone it down if you want. Um, you don't have to, you know, there's just... As a rally fan, I just think this game is incredible. I say that now, having not gone through a thousand stages, by the time I get there, I might be <laughs> completely different. I might be cursing this and um, wanting to see the back of it, but I just think it's such a nice game. Such, you know, you, sometimes you just want to kick back and relax. This is the perfect game for you. For, well, for me. I can't speak on behalf of everyone. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anybody who obviously as a rally fan, even people that aren't necessarily rally fans, I think it would obviously help if you like driving games, but I think this is a really good introduction to the sport, anyone who's kind of curious about it, it gives you sort of a, a fun overview, it's a little bit comedic obviously, and some of the car descriptions, and, um, and you know, some of the names of some of the cars, like the movie being the movie, and just stuff like that, but it's quite light-hearted, but I don't think that's a bad thing, because I'm going to be flying off the road get reset that was a bit too ambitious on the speed but uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought now oh, I was just kind of rabbiting on about how good the game is I really enjoy it and I think if I didn't know that much about rally but was vaguely interested or just interested in motorsport in general I'd get a real kick about how kind of going through the different areas the different cars um, obviously you've got a good mix of locations and different surface types which again introduces somebody who perhaps doesn't follow rally as intently or you know isn't into the WRC or any sort of rally but then somebody who is the nostalgia this game gives off is, is great you know even games like Dirt Rally 2 which I think again is obviously a lot more realistic, a lot more on the serious side, but I think that game is, is great for, uh, you know, you've got the nostalgic, you've got the Group B cars, you've got Group A, you've got modern sort of R5s, and you've got the radical stuff as well, 
as well as classics, I still don't think, despite as good as that game is, it doesn't give you that kind of nostalgia effect that this one does. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think uh, this one's just got that charm and sort of quirkiness to, uh, you know, the art style's great, but the cars just look fantastic. So they're so recognisable straight away, like you can see, you know, obviously like your minis and the escorts and stuff, but then as you get through, you've got like the Volvos, the BMWs, the Lancias, and they're just so iconic. Um, despite the sort of cartoony art style. And I just think, as somebody who likes Rally, it's really cool. It's just, I really like it, personally. I know I'm just kind of rambling on. But if it's not apparent, I am passionate about this game and Rally in general. But we've got big stage coming up here, 7.1 stay, uh, 7.1 miles, excuse me. So this is a big one. And we're starting to, we're still first overall, but I think we were only fifth in that last stage. So I'm definitely, the lead is thinning. Excuse me, just had a quick swig of water. I don't think I've ever spoken so much on a stream, at least, at least up to this point. So again, do let me know in the chat if it's something you want me to continue with. And similarly, so if you don't, you won't hurt my feelings. Um, I'm just sort of experimenting, I suppose. Um, also, I'm thinking about what game to be streaming next. Um, I was considering some Dirt Rally 2. Maybe just going through sort of daily challenges on that, weekly challenges. Uh, they are a lot longer generally than this so a weekly challenge could be sort of eight stages and sometimes even longer um, but that's an option uh, other options are maybe to just not even play sort of multiple games it doesn't have to be rally generally when I started this streaming venture I did think it would be motorsport games um, I haven't got Gran Turismo 7 yet as I frankly can't afford it unfortunately and I don't have a PS5 yet now I know obviously it's compatible on the PS4 but I was hoping to experience it on the PS5 um, as it was intended now I could play some of that I've got GT Sport I don't even know if GT Sport is is still supported. I mean, well, I mean, I'm sure it is, but I don't know how much longer it would be. Um, and I imagine a massive portion of the player base has moved on to seven now. So maybe, hopefully, in the not too distant future, I'll have Gran Turismo Seven. And, you know, you can stream sort of license tests, um, uh, sport mode, you know, daily races and stuff as well. That was one of my uh, thoughts moving forward. So. I will probably stick to racing games. They're not the only games I play, but it's probably the genre I enjoy the most. So I imagine I'd stick to that. So okay. Apologies if you just lost me for a second there. I think my internet might have been a bit slow and buffering. According to my laptop here. So apologies if the stream did just cut out. If it didn't, don't panic, don't worry, it's just me. And the amateurish show continues. But yeah, if there's any games you'd wanna you'd wanna see me play, again, feel free to let me know in the chat. I as I say, I was considering doing some dirt rally, but I just thought actually it'd be fun just to kind of play part of rally for a little bit longer until I get that platinum and it'd be more of a Sort of, I suppose a relaxed stream where I talk a bit more, engage with the chat and things a bit more than I had been doing previously. But again, we've not quite got enough viewers at this point to maybe justify that. But, you know, hopefully you've got a better understanding of myself, the sort of person I am. I am a remote sport nerd. 
I love motorbikes too, uh, you know, MotoGP, British Superbike, World Superbikes. I'm absolutely awful at those games though. I haven't ever really been any good at uh, the MotoGP games, and I haven't played Ride or any of the Ride series. Although I understand that the people that make the Ride series have got the World Superbike license now. And so a World Superbike game could be coming out for the first time in a long time. I could be wrong. It might not even be them who's got the license, but I'm fairly certain I'm hearing rumblings of a World Superbike game, which could potentially be something I try. Uh, I know there's meant to be a British Touring Car game coming out as well. I did have... I've, I, at the minute I'm playing with a control pad. Um, I do have a wheel, my living arrangements make it a little bit challenging to set that up and use it at the minute, uh, but again, the long term aspirations would be playing more sort of sim, sim races, so like I mentioned Grand Turismo 7, uh, potentially something like Assetto Corsa, something like that, which again, I don't really want to play until I've got the wheel set up and perhaps have a bigger space for it. But these are all just ideas at this point. You know, I'm kind of maybe thinking too far ahead into the future. Um, but, you know, obviously you've got to have goals, haven't you? Um, so that was quite a good stage, a stage win with one to go. Um, I'm going to check the leaderboards before we start stage five because we might have a win on the cards. Disclaimer, that cannot be guaranteed. Uh, so we'll get the car repaired first and foremost. Looks like the radiator took an absolute beating. Um, oh, you can't look at the... You can't look at the order before the stage. I thought you could. It's like I've never played this game before, isn't it? But I have, I can assure you. I've got the, the videos on the channel to prove it. So, we're going to go for it. One stage to go. A win is on the cards. The car's repaired, the radiator's working, so hopefully, hopefully we can bring it home. I'm not sure of the margin we're working with, and to be honest, I'd probably be better off not knowing it. I don't want to have uh, be worried about uh, if I'm going too fast or too slow. I'm just going to try and be as quick as possible. And hopefully mistake free. What a debut this would be in the uh, in the Uber whip. Nearly lost it there on the exit. Just completely let the throttle go and let the car sort of correct itself. Before we commit to the power. I've won a few stages, I think at least two of the four that we've gone through, so I must have a decent lead going into this, although there was that stage where I think I finished fifth. Um, so, <laughs> really I should have checked before I hastily continued, but anyway, we're here now. We can't change the past. But I'm feeling quite quick. Dare I say, I thought the Volvo would be my quickest car in this class. It was the one I felt most comfortable in. But the more I drive this BMW, the more comfortable I get. I do think it is quicker. It looks a lot quicker, doesn't it? It just, it's a bit more sleek, a bit more aerodynamic, a bit sharper. The Volvo is just, uh, just a boxy. It looks safe. I know that sounds a bit weird. Um, whereas this looks, it looks like it could, uh, it could kill you if you got things wrong, and it probably would, um, to be honest. But anyway, we are coming, I think, towards the end of the stage here tonight. I think I'm coming up, I'm just going to hit that flat as we head up the hill. There's the finish, flat out, Ooh, a bit wobbly, 
but we brought it home. Let's see if we uh, did enough to hold on. We did. Second in the stage, Ricky Bobby, NASCAR legend. If you know, you know. And oh yeah, and yeah, that's that's massively cool. That's a bigger margin than we had in the previous round, and on a harder difficulty. So that's how it's done, guys. Obviously. Where was this pit? Where was this speed when I was going through the original career mode playthrough? Long gone, but uh, yeah, I suppose that vindicates the decision to crank up the difficulty. Oh, I only won two stages. I actually thought I'd won three. Clearly, I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing. So, yeah, a good win in 1980. That's group four. That's group four done. There we go. I was enjoying that. I'm sure we'll come back and play through Group 4 at some point. Um, group B, I must have... Uh, I must have tried to repeat this, and hence why I don't have a time there, or a result there, I should say. Um, so I think we've got time for one more... one more event. That would bring us up to about an hour of the stream, which I think is uh, is fair enough. Let's have a look at the Group B cars. I haven't tried this, the MG, zero miles on the odometer, the Peugeot, got 14 miles in that, none in the Quattro, some in the Quattro 2, the Lancia, yeah, we've got a lot of miles in that, 142, not too many in the Cosworth. There's a rear-wheel drive Cosworth, which looks cool, but surely it's harder to drive than the all-wheel. You've got the Mazda, that's hammer. That's got to be a quattro, isn't it? Yeah. It must be, because you've got the other Das Hammers, V1, V2, so yeah, it's the V3 surely is the same. The Il, Mo Il Monster, that's the Lancia Stratos, I think. Il Cavallo, I think, is a Ferrari. Uh, the Renault 5. The van, the King of Africa. I'm not sure. It's a, is that a Toyota Corolla? It's quite a cool car. 460 brake horsepower. I might. There's a Porsche. Hyena. I'm not sure what that is. I'm actually going to go for the the speed van naturally. Try and just get a cool livery for it. Quite like that. It's a bit of a retro feel. That's not, I like that one too. Uh, I'll go with this, it looks like a paint and, paint and decorator's van or something. No idea how it's going to go guys, but this is the kind of ridiculous stuff you can look forward to on the stream moving forward. Um, as we try and, try and come up with ways to keep this thousand stage run fresh. I haven't driven any of the vans in the game yet, I don't think. Uh, let alone in a competition. I might have driven one in free roam maybe at one point. Anyway, let's try it. See how it handles. It sounds pretty, pretty ferocious. I don't think we'd need that many spare tyres on board. Uh, that's, whoa, okay. <laughs> it's a lot more oversteering than I was expecting. For a van. And here the turbo. Sprawling. Oh dear. Alright, it's probably going to be top, quite top heavy with all those tyres on. Don't know what else they've got in the back. But yeah, I think most most drivers would take a spare on stage, but not 20 odd, I believe. It's a lot more nimble than you think. <laughs> I was expecting to be a bit of a tank around the corners and understeer, if anything, but I don't know, it's probably got uh, an engine they borrowed off the Quattro or something. This looks ridiculous, just <laughs> splitting the crowd in two. Part on the crowd. I 
think I might have found my new favourite Group B vehicle, maybe not. I think obviously this thing's obviously been put in the game as a joke, but I can't help but feel like it's just going to roll over at every every sort of sharp turn. Just like even that, look at that. Oh dear, just because of the it just looks so top heavy. There's no way you could drive it like this in real life. It'd just be on its side in seconds. But it is quite fun to drive. It's just, it's quite jarring because I just, I'm convinced every turn it's just going to roll. But I think if I could just ignore that, it might actually be quite quick. It's been a while since I've driven Group B. We'll find out in a second. Ooh. It's a handful. Seventh, yeah, that's that's about right. Uh, 28 seconds off the pace and it's the Quattro's that seem to have the speed I'm going to have to try one of those at some point um, as for me at least that's when somebody says Group B I instantly think of the Quattro with all the huge spoiler on the back and the splitter on the front um, yeah when somebody says Group B that's the first thing I think of that and like the Stratos, the Peugeots, but the, the Quattro is just the most iconic for me. Ah, uh, look at this thing. Oh, I don't recall this being entered in any uh, WRC events. You just have to be so much braver to step up from group four to B is massive. I mean that BMW, I was kind of intimidated by the look of it. But it was so smooth once you once you got used to it in comparison to uh, to this. But the power difference, I think this has got about two hundred more horsepower in it than the BMW had, so it should be more valuable, shouldn't it? Makes sense. And then the group, the group S, I think you got like sort of 700 odd horsepower. And some of the, uh, the group A is like 800 plus. But I think it was a lot more refined by then. You know, the four wheel drive systems were a lot more sophisticated. And so, despite the, uh, the powerful engines, you, you know, you had more more weight in the car as well, which I think kept them somewhat grounded. Group S was, was nuts because those cars weighed nothing. Um, the four wheel drive, I think, was obviously better than the Group B era, but still somewhat. Um, simple doesn't, it's not doing it justice. Obviously, they weren't simple systems, but is it fundamental? Is that the right word? But at least in comparison to the more modern versions but again I'm just wrapping on this stream maybe use it as a, some sort of evidence to I don't know I'm in an asylum just babbling on about rallying there so yeah it started back in the hazy days of March 22 when he started comparing the four-wheel drive systems of different areas of rally car. Jesus. I didn't expect to be doing that on the internet. We're way off the pace, aren't we, in this seventh? Again, I, I think I'm just really comfortable in Group 4, and so I was kind of lured into cranking up the difficulty, and then really got a bit overconfident <laughs> coming into Group B. I did not expect it to be this tricky, but that's fine. Let's get the van repaired. Oh, I don't need any repairs, just a just a wash. This thing's bulletproof. So move on to stage three. There we go. 
よね。I think Norway as well is a bad indicator of my my pace generally because it's it is a location I struggle at. This and、uh, Finland, I think, are my worst. Worst location. Whoa! In terms of、uh, performance, I, mean, I can be bad anywhere at times. Germany actually tends to be one of my quicker, quicker stages for whatever reason. But yeah, Norway. I'm always well off the pace, particularly in the higher groups, for whatever reason. There we go, into the trees. All,、right. All over the place. It just feels like it's on ice skates at the moment. It just. <laughs> It feels so weird going so quickly in a vehicle like this. It just doesn't look right. As I say, every time I glance down, sort of take my eyes off the road, I just feel like it's just going to roll over. Or how the hell am I going to slow it down for the corner when doing 100 miles an hour in a top-heavy vehicle like this? Very risky. But the brakes are actually good. The brakes are really good. It's、uh, a lot more stable than it looked. Oh no! I was talking too soon. At least you have plenty of、uh, room for the tools in the back. When you're on stage repairs, and as I say, just twenty odd tyres on the roof in case you hit a flat. Look at that! Oh, Tukin's back. Hey, how's it going, Tukin? I am good. Thank you for、uh, for joining. It's been a while. Welcome back to the stream. What a、uh, what a way to come in just to see a a massive van cruising around the stages of Norway.、Um, I didn't expect this at the start of the stream either. But、uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining and thanks for popping up and saying hello. There we go, guys. Stage four is about to begin. Let's see if we can get a better result. We seem to be getting slower and slower as this rally goes on. Oh no, I don't think many expected the band to be topping the timing sheets.、Oh. It is quite oversteering. A bit too jittery. Just as I start to get a bit comfortable in it, and push a bit harder, the mistakes come back. I wouldn't be running out into the stage, into the road, across all this thing, barreling down the hill. But these spectators of the Group B era were fearless. Seemed a little bit more standoffish than the previous set of spectators, but you can't blame them. Ah,、oh, again, those hay bales are killing me. Just trying to be a bit. A bit cheeky and get a bit of a cut.、And、I'm not learning, am I, from my mistakes? I'm just catching me every time. It costs just so much time. 
I don't have a co-driver to tell me not to cut. But we get a sub two minute stage, which is still only good for eight. We're nearly 30 seconds off the back. Blimey, I can only blame the choice of vehicle on that. That is way off the pace. Nice to see you again. Yep, nice to see you again too, Tuk, and thank you very much for uh, for coming back after the horror show you witnessed last time. Um, and that's it. That is it for that season. We'll try again. I know I said at the start we'll have one more rally, but I think I'm tempted just to just to do one more before we sign off tonight. And I can't. I can't have eight. I can't have eighth on there. We need to go and we need to go and rectify that. So we'll keep it on master. We'll keep it on severe. And I am going to go for 500 horsepower. We'll drive. I'm going to go for. Am I going to go for the Das Hammer V3, V2, or one 520? I feel like the first one. I know it's got the least power. But it can ease us in. And I'll just stick with the classic livery. Let's see if we can get a bit more speed. We're on Japan, so we're on predominantly tarmac, which is going to be a quicker surface. We'll have one more, one more stab at 1982, and then we'll uh, we'll move on. <laughs> Okay. I'll get straight into it. Looks like it's raining, which is uh, actually something I quite like because it tends to slow the AI down. So, particularly on massive difficulty, as long as I don't get caught out by the rain, it could actually be a little bit of an advantage. I was hitting, I didn't realise it was an advertising board, so luckily it didn't cost us too much time. Oh. You do have to be really careful of those puddles on this, they can really cause your car to understeer or oversteer, but ultimately just throw you if you're not careful. Basically, aquaplaning or hydroplaning. If you're an American, I think that's what they call it. Way more courses on the floor through that section. Lots of water, lots of standing water. Oh boy. Now, this probably isn't actually as quick as the van, but it just. I don't know, it just feels, it feels normal when I'm driving, I'm not constantly panicking that I'm going to roll it through every corner. It is actually a really cool looking car, the cops, I do like it. I can't believe I haven't actually driven this yet on this car, that's a bit of a travesty. But, as I say, grinding for a thousand stages, it gives me that opportunity to go back and try some of the cars I missed, maybe revisit some of the ones that I didn't get on with previously, and maybe now I'm going to be a bit quicker in. I think that's the beauty of this game, is that there is actually quite a lot of replay value. Once you finish the career mode, it doesn't all end there. Like I say, you've got the daily and weekly challenges, which keep the game fresh, give you a bit of motivation. And then, of course, simply just going back and trying different vehicles, because there is... I'm not sure how many cars in total, but there are a lot to try and Thank 
quiet now as you can tell I'm concentrating but at least trying to it's actually surprisingly hard to play this game while chatting uh, but that felt like a, a decent first stage that illusion is about to be shattered by the time stream or well, maybe not second overall still a big gap though between first and second ten, over 10 seconds um, it'd be interesting to see how it is on the next stage where there's fog so it will be dry so I expect the AI to be a bit quicker so let's see let's see where we finish on stage two I suppose the AI will be quicker but in theory I should be as well now that it's dry but who knows here we go, we'll get straight into it. 3.7 miles, so it's going to be a shorter stage. But now we should be able to see the full potential of oh, this quite true. more settled than the van did. That's for sure. As it, it should be. I'm sure I've said this before on stream, but I think Japan's my favourite location in the game, at least visually. I love the contrast in the trees and you probably won't be able to see it much in this stage but you know the sort of the distances, particularly on the sort of twisty mountainous sections where you're just cruising down and you've got these big drops off the side of the road but it looks cool. And then the more kind of rural sections look great too, look at all the pink trees off in the distance. But if you want to see a beautiful Japanese location in a video game, I'm going to plug Ghost of Tsushima, which is an amazing game. And, and coincidentally, the only game I've actually platinumed up to this stage. And I'm hoping Art of Rally will be a second. Maybe that's an omen. Two games that make Japan look absolutely stunning. And the two games, hopefully, that I'll get platinum. Well, this stage feels quite quick. As I say, you never really know until you get on the timing sheets at the end. Some of you are probably watching this thinking, what is he on about? This is all for, oh, I've completely lost control there. What happened? I can't just hit a bump. I don't I didn't think I realised I was airborne until it was too late. Right at the end of the stage as well, what a shame. That would have cost me a good... 10 seconds. Yeah, down to fifth. Oh, I think we would have been fourth were it not for that. Um, maybe wishful thinking. Maybe not as bad as I thought. Still third overall in the rally. Um, let's see if we can cling on to that and bring it, bring it through, or bring it home in a in top three. A podium place would be great. Um, group B on Master difficulty, but I don't think my hopes will be that high. Let's see, about Asama Reverse. So we get a chance to repair the car. The radiator apparently took a beat. Not sure how, I don't remember. Maybe it was from that off road excursion there at the end of stage two. I'm not too sure, but this one's at night. So, in terms of visibility, Obviously, rain on the first stage, fog on the second, now we're at night. So, not the easiest way to uh, negotiate, but here we are. Now, another top tip for me, and I'm by no means at 
top art of Rally Player, but it's it's easier to kind of explain this at night on this game. But really, you want your eyes to be as far ahead down the road as possible, so you're not actually looking at the car or even just in front of it, but as far ahead as possible. And then you can see the car in your peripheral vision. So you're sort of visualising your optimum nut, optimum line through the corners. And naturally, if you if you sort of focus on that, you will steer the car towards those lines. I'm probably not doing a good job of explaining it, but if you can focus on what's coming up, you almost sort of plan your route subconsciously and the car naturally just follows it. it, it it's a bit strange at first. The reason I say it's easier to describe at night is because you you almost want to look where the edge of the where the headlights are emitting. That that is where you want to be focused. Uh, roughly, that up hill here, you see, just where the the light and the darkness kind of meet. That's where you kind of want to be looking generally, and then focusing and. As I say, obviously you keep the car in your peripheral vision, but if you can focus on what's ahead, you'll find your lines are a bit better, your plan corners and sequences, particularly of tight technical areas, much better. That's that's not just for this game, that's just a general racing game tip. As I say, I'm by no means, you know, like a eSport player or anything like that, or have that top pace, but it, it feels a bit strange at first, but if you can, once you kind of understand it, you uh, you definitely will be quicker. So you're going to want to be sort of looking at the entry to the corner before you get there. By the time your car's at the entry of the corner, you want to be looking at the apex or the, the basically the, the middle of the corner. And then by the time your car's at the apex, you want to be visualising your exit. And so you're almost putting yourself ahead of the car, visualising it, and then as a result, pulling through. As I say, I'm definitely butchering the explanation, but if you can get into that practice, uh, you will definitely find you're, you're quicker and more consistent. Uh, but it does require a bit of focus. So we're actually up into second, I think, overall, with one stage to go, and it is a long one at 7.1 miles. I think find I generally do a bit better on the longer stages than the shorter ones but that said it does give more opportunity for mistakes so uh, always got to put a negative negative spin on it haven't I but here we are 7.1 miles left let's see if we can end this video on a high I will of course be back again tomorrow uh, unless barring some sort of disaster you know, I'll get abducted or something or Virgin Media can't support my upload speed or provide a decent upload speed. I don't know. I'm planning on being about around tomorrow. Let's leave it at that. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video so far please consider subscribing. That'll be fun. I'll uh, have you along for a lot for the ride. Uh, if you are interested in getting in touch, obviously you can leave a comment and all that stuff. Uh, or probably the best way to contact me is Twitter. Uh, so I've got links in the video description to both my Twitter and Instagram. Um, as I say, you can message me on there or follow me. Uh, it'd be good to have you along. But no pressure. Don't worry. If not. quite quick so far I'm definitely getting more confident finding I can apply full throttle 
a bit more regularly than I was doing, a bit more confident in getting on the throttle outside the corner, perhaps braking a little bit later, just getting used to how the, the car handles, and then naturally just getting that little bit quicker, so that's quite a tricky jump, just get a little kink in the road just after the jump, so you've got to time it right, you've got to get the car position right if you're going to be committed on the throttle, because that can go horribly wrong. Sort of what we were talking about earlier, there's certain certain jumps where you can just go flat out without any, any real worry, in some way you have to be really careful. I didn't actually expect to go over it. I thought I'd hit it and just that would stop me in my tracks, which might have actually been better than the uh, the flight that ensued as a result of getting off the road. And that mistake may well have cost me right towards the end of the stage, which is a shame. But on master difficulty, yeah, that can absolutely make or break the stage. So fifth overall. Let's check the timing sheets. Uh, 24 seconds off and it's quite a big gap between me and four so actually it might not have affected the result all that much but we finished second in the rally which is which is good a minute 10 seconds off the pace but um that didn't feel too bad so i think we'll leave it there guys i know i was sort of teasing uh another stage and saying oh we'll do one more and then there was another one after that but uh yeah i think we'll leave it there for tonight there will be plenty more tomorrow as i said uh, so tune in if you fancy that um so all that remains is to thank you for watching and see you next time i don't really know how to sign these off yet so we'll just go with that see you next time thanks guys